Their mission has taken them all over the world, proclaiming the gospel at such storied venues as Madison Square Garden, the Apollo Theater, and the Grand Old Opry. Jesus will never say no. Their voices of glory and praise have brought them six Grammy nominations, an armful of stellar and other awards, 18 top 10 albums, and the love and gratitude of thousands of adoring fans worldwide. But for Doug Williams, Melvin Williams, and Henry Green, the story remains the same as it was back at home in Mississippi in the very beginning. And to this day, the Williams brothers remain men on a mission. The music of the Williams Brothers has always incorporated a wide range of stylistic influences from traditional gospel to more contemporary sounds like funk, R&B, and soul. Their albums have even included gospel arrangements of such pop hits as Up Where We Belong and Time After Time. They've collaborated with such musical legends as Steve Winwood, James Taylor, Luther Vandross, Al Green, and Stevie Wonder, to name just a few. They were also pioneers in the field of music videos, producing one of the very first gospel concept videos in 1985 for their mega hit song, I'm Just a Nobody. Just a nobody. To tell everybody about somebody. Followed by another hit song in 1986, Sweep Around Your Own Front Door. Sweep around your own front door Before you try to sweep around The story of the Williams Brothers begins on a farm in South Mississippi during the Great Depression. It begins with a man, Leon Pop Williams, and his young wife, Amanda. Tough times require tough hearts, and Pop worked hard every day to support his large family. He worked the farm and as a blacksmith and as a bricklayer. Whatever it took to keep food on the table. He passed the values of industry and dedication on to his nine children, along with the belief that it's always important to have your own. According to Melvin Williams, Pop believed that you shouldn't depend on other people to take care of you. You always needed to be sure you had your own means to take care of your family. That meant working hard and staying strong. He always used to say, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. But life wasn't just hard work for the Williams family. Church was a big part of life. Along with Pop's love for gospel music, he and Amanda sang in the choir at Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church. And so did the children when they were old enough to carry a tune. Henry Green said that it all goes back to their roots, to their mothers and fathers. They grew up in the South, in the country. Back then, no matter what you did on Saturday night, no matter what movie you saw or how late you stayed out, you had to go to church with your parents on Sunday morning, and when you got to church, you acted right. Pop also formed a group called the Southern Gospel Singers, and later the Little Williams Brothers. They featured boys Leonard and Melvin, along with appearances by older brother Frank, cousins Charles Gayden, Willie Bell, and friend Thomas Bonds, and later little Doug, the youngest of the family. Doug was very shy as a boy, but he knew that he wanted to sing. It was just in him. He would be in the living room using a broom handle as a microphone, acting like he was up before people, playing those old gospel records over and over again, and singing along with them word for word. In 1961, Pop Williams added a new voice to the group. Pop had heard about a young singer named Henry Green who sang at a nearby church. Pop liked the way the young man could hit the high notes, and soon he brought Henry, or Mr. Green, as his friends and fans still call him, into the group. Pop Williams took the boys to performances around the country and their audience grew. In the early 70s, Doug, Melvin, and Leonard started writing their own songs for the group. 
Later that decade, they began producing their own music. They would go on to also produce and write for such artists as Yolanda Adams, The Mighty Clouds of Joy, The Canton Spirituals, John B. Key, Rance Allen, Shirley Caesar, and Marvin Winans, to name a few. Doug Williams says that songwriting comes naturally to him. He can see an incident happen or hear a word that a pastor says in church on Sunday morning, and that can automatically inspire a song. He enjoys writing songs about all aspects of life, songs that people can relate to. Pop Williams had always told his kids to have your own. In 1991, just two years after their father's passing, the Williams brothers fulfilled Pop's longtime dream by forming their own record label. After recording for many different companies in the past and turning down several six-figure offers from major labels, God finally placed it in their hearts and gave them the green light to strike out on their own. And it Blackberry Records was the first black-owned label in Mississippi with major distribution. In 2006, they moved their headquarters from Macomb, Mississippi to a 7,000-square-foot facility in Jackson, Mississippi, which for several years had already housed a recording studio, Terminal Recording Studios. Blackberry Records features the Williams Brothers plus a roster of gospel greats like the Texas Boys, Neil Roberson, and the Bolton Brothers. Today, the Williams Brothers are secure in their place in gospel history. But the dream is the same as it was for Pop Williams way back when. It's a dream that continues day by day, concert after concert, venture after venture. Down through the years, God has always blessed this group. No matter what, they always trusted God. The message is as important today as it was back on that day more than 45 years ago when Pop Williams put his boys together and told them to sing the glory of Christ. He taught his boys to always put God first and to treat people the way they would want to be treated. The mission goes on and the Williams brothers are still here. Heartaches, I've had my share of heartaches but I'm still here Through it all I made it through Another day's journey God kept me here Can anybody relate to that tonight? I made it, yeah. I made it through Another day's journey 